Hello, and welcome back to our study of Pnei Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yazar Malamed, Shlita. Here we are on a Wednesday, and we are getting closer and closer to Rosh Hashanah, last couple of sessions of the year. And the next chapter is Matai Mutar Lizatot Me'amir Sa'emes. When can we, let's say, deviate or sort of adjust when it comes to telling the truth? So let's see what it means. So after we have explained in broadly the importance and the value of speaking truth and not speaking falsehood, the central question then is, What do you do when you have a tug of war, as it were, between the value of truth and a different value? Lemashal, for example. What should we do when somebody asks us, listen, did this so-and-so, did this person say bad things about me? From the value of truth, one should say, yes, of course, this person spoke evil against you. On the other hand, for the sake of peace, the value of peace, and the prohibition against speaking Lashon Hara, then you have to say, no, it didn't happen. He didn't say anything bad against you. In two places in the Gemara, it's explained that it's sometimes it's okay to deviate from the value of truth and help fulfill a different value. So let's see. This is probably the instance in which we're all familiar with, that in the sake of, or for the sake of peace, for shalom, then maybe you can change the truth a little bit. There are three instances where you can deviate from the truth. That's the language of the Gemara. So let's see what that means. When it comes to learning, when it comes to studying, then maybe we can have a change of the truth. Papuria, Pirusha Binyana Isha it says with intimate issues when it comes to uh, let's say husband and wife. And Bushpiza Pirusha Biterhamarech, and also when it comes to hosting guests. Behemshach Nivari Shloshad Rabbi Shinevskrukan. So he says actually in a few later halachas, so we get to Tezayin and Yudzayin, we'll explain this in more detail. But first we want to deal with generalities. We want to explain in generality the three categories in which a person is allowed to lie, and we will explain three general categories or three general principles. The first. The first. When the Chachamim told us, when Chazal said that you're allowed to change the truth or deviate from the truth, that's when, first of all, it does not cause harm to another person. However, in an instance where if you lie, yes, you may save one person, but you're going to cause embarrassment or damage to another, then certainly you cannot change the truth. The second principle he explains is from one of the Rishonim, from Rav Kalfasi, also known as the Rif. Vuhu, and this is as such. There are times when it's actually a mitzvah to change the truth. And then there are times when one is allowed to change the truth. The Havdel, the difference, the difference is between the two sources in the Talmud. In the first case in Yavamas, when it says for shalom, for peace, when you want to have peace among people and lying will help foster peace, there he says, not only are you allowed to, but it's a mitzvah to do so. However, in the Gemara Bav Metzia, it talks about Changing truth because maybe you want to protect modesty. Oh, Kadelim Noah Bushar, you want to prevent somebody from being embarrassed. Budvarm Elam Mutter Lishanos Aval Ein Mitzvah. In those cases, 
one is allowed to change the truth, but one is not necessarily obligated. And you certainly don't have the, the moniker of mitzvah attached to it. Klal Shlishi, the third principle, Muva B'Shem HaBal Shem Tov. He quotes in the name of the Bal Shem Tov. So I love this. Ram Lama could go from the Rif and the Rishonim to the Bal Shem Tov. V'gam Hagyon Mechayv Kablo. And this is the proper thing that we should accept. V'hu She'adam She'nichshel Ba'amir HaSheker. Someone who has a problem with speaking on truth. Aslo L'Shanos Mena Emes Afilu L'Ma'an Asir Shalom. V'nev Shehu Tzorch L'Lechas Ala Katzeh HaCharon Ba'amir HaSheker. Shim Lokin Bor Shior L'Atzmo Heter V'yam Shecho Sheker Gam B'Dvarim Asurim. That... A person who normally has trouble telling the truth. So we have to be specifically makbed that he has to tell the truth, even when it comes to making peace, because he has to go to every length, every extent possible to speak the truth, because if not, then it's possible that he's going to, let's say, create a situation, oh, this is allowed to me, and this is, a, you know, this is, a, this is something that belongs to me, and he's going to start making lies about things that are dvarim asurim, things are even prohibited. A person could say, oh, that, that which is usr, it's just clearly usr, oh, this is allowed to me. And it's clear that with this, that it, there is no heter, there is no permissibility to speak lashon hara or to cause any fights or any disagreements. Rather, you shouldn't say any sort of shek or any falsehood just to make peace. Very difficult principles. We'll see these more in de- detail as we go along. Al and another principle he says that maybe we should note here is Gam Kasher If we have cases where you're allowed to deviate from the truth so that we don't come into con- conflict with other values, then we have to actually estimate how much is a person allowed to lie. Or how much can one deviate from the truth? That's why Chazal called us The kavana is is to change. You can only change up to the point where you're not going to conflict with the other values. More than that, however, it's not like oh, once I'm lying, I can just say whatever I want. No. Just whatever it is, so that you don't come into conflict with the other values. So we'll see this more as we go along. Not the most simple of halachas, but in any event, we must study them. So thank you so much for joining us. We will see you here next time, God willing, and we'll hopefully continue as we get closer and closer to Rosh Hashanah and then Asar Shemechuva. And it's hard to believe that Tishrei is upon us. But thanks for listening. Have a great day, and we'll see you here next time. <laughs>